Going over. Men are already, sir. Okay. Private Laurel, you stay here and guard this post until we leave from duty. Gee, I wish I was going with you. Take care of yourself, won't you? Don't worry about me, Stan. I'll be back. We'll all be back. So long, pal. So long.
You brainless idiot! What are you trying to do? Put that thing down! War is war and I've got my orders. What orders? Orders to guard this post. <laughs> you blockheads! The war's been over for 20 years! It doesn't make any difference. When I'm told to do something... Uh... What'd you say? I said the war's been over for 20 years. Huh? The war's been over for 20 years. Huh. How time flies. Just seems like yesterday. What'd you say? You heard me. Well, that accounts for it. Accounts for what? Well, everything's been kind of quiet around here lately. See, I didn't know... You better come along with me and I'll see that you get back home. The war's been over. Well, it's better than staying here. Thanks very much. You sure the war's been over for 20 years? Positively, I can prove it to you. Well, if it isn't, somebody's going to get into an awful jam, and believe <laughs> me, if you don't tell me... This... <laughs> Were the heads done enough this morning, dear? Is there anything else, dear? Was burned my finger on the bacon this morning. Light of my love, you've got something on your mind. You can't fool your baby Oliver. Oh, Oliver, you don't even remember what happened a year ago today. Was that the day I fell off the bicycle and skinned my knee? No, Oliver. Now, just try to think. It had something to do with you and me. I give up. I can't quite remember what you mean. Unless it was the day we got married. That's it. It was just a year ago today that you came into my heart. How could I forget that? <laughs> Congratulations, Mrs. Hardy. Of course I didn't forget. Uh, we'll celebrate. That's it. We'll have a party. Oh. Oliver, <laughs> how I've looked forward to this day. I've planned to prepare a dinner just for the two of us, as I did a year ago tonight. Dear, yeah, you're so sweet. <laughs> and I'm such a cat. No, you're not. Now, we'll do anything your little heart desires. Mm -hmm. We'll have a nice, quiet dinner. Uh -huh. Then after that, we'll sit and hold hands, and I'll whisper sweet little nothings in your ear. Oh, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. And you are so wonderful. <sighs> yeah, I wonder if I could have an extra dollar with my allowance today. Oliver, isn't 75 cents a day enough for you? Well, usually it is, but today is different. I wish you wouldn't ask me what I'm going to do with it. It's to be a surprise. Oh, Oliver, of course. You can have a dollar and 25 cents more today. Well, there's one more thing. Now, do you mind if I use the car? Because I'll only be gone one hour. Oh, of course not. But be careful and hurry right back, won't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> I won't even say goodbye, my precious little fig, Newton. I'll just say pardon me for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, Mrs. Gilbert. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Hardy. Uh, gorgeous day, isn't it? Uh, bright and cheerful and so forth. Oh, it's a lovely day. <laughs> this is quite a day for me. Uh, my anniversary. And Mrs. Hardy's, too. I have a reason to celebrate myself. Mr. Gilbert is coming home after two months hunting in Africa. Oh, fine. Then we both have a reason to celebrate. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh. Uh, that's all right. I'll get them just a moment. Oh, hello, darling. Uh, this is Mr. Hardy, my husband, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Gilbert? Uh, you came back rather unexpectedly, didn't you? I dropped my newspaper and Mr. Hardy was helping me pick it up. Uh, yes. You see, we were holding hands. Uh, uh, we were shaking hands, and the newspapers fell out from under her arm. <laughs> well, I guess we can get up now. <laughs> right on that. Well, I guess we'd better be going. Goodbye. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> My mistake. I'm sorry. Oh, 
snake. Goodbye, Mr. Oh, <laughs> goodbye, Mr. Gilbert. <laughs> and who is that snake? Well, that's Mr. Hardy. He's our neighbor from across the hall. Come in, dear. It's so nice to have you home. Uh, well, good morning, James. Good morning, Mr. Hardy. What's the news this morning? I was just reading about a fellow that stayed in the trenches for 20 years after the war and didn't know it was over. <laughs> well, how in the world could anyone be so stupid? I don't know. Here's his picture. Oh. I can't imagine anybody being that dumb. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I can. Out, please. Thank you. Quite all right. Down, please. I don't see him just now, but you'll find him out there on the grounds somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> Don't get up now. Sit right there. <laughs> How'd you know I was here? Well, I saw your picture in the paper. Did you? Yeah. How'd I look? Well, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of you, too. You know, if I hadn't have seen you, I never would have known you. <laughs> gee, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. Have you missed me all this time? I certainly have. I missed you, too. <laughs> Well, how's things and everything? Oh, everything's just fine. You know, I got married. You don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you marry, Fifi? No, no. Uh, Lulu? No, no. Camille? No. I know, Fanny. No, no, you wouldn't know her. She's a local girl. Oh. You just wait till you meet her. She's one of the finest little women that ever lived. Don't tell. And can she cook? <laughs> can she? Can she? You just wait till you put your legs under that table. Uh, pardon me. You just wait till you put your leg under that table and put your teeth into one of those big, thick, juicy steaks covered with mushrooms and those hot biscuits oozing with molten butter and those seven-layer chocolate cakes swimming in whipped cream. Any beans? You can have beans if you want them. You can have anything in the world you want. Well, it was nice of you to call, Ollie. Hope you'll come around and see me again sometime. I've got to be going now. Where are you going? Well, it's called for mess, and I've got to eat. 
You're not going in there. You're coming home with me to meet the missus. Am I? And have one of those big, thick, juicy steaks. Thank you, Ollie. You're welcome, Stan. I want you to remember, from now on, my home is your home. Thank you, Ollie. You're welcome, Stan. And I'm never going to let you out of my sight again. Thank you, Ollie. You're welcome, Stan. Uh, just sit back and relax. Gee, I'm sure glad to see you, kid. Gee, Ollie, you know, this is just like old times. You and I been together. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> we sure used to have a lot of fun, didn't we? We sure did. You remember how dumb I used to be? Yeah. Well, I'm better now. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear it. Say, will you wait a minute, Ollie? What do you want? I want to get a drink of water. Now, you sit right there. I'll get the water for well, you. Well, I only want to get over the faucet. I... Well, how can you get over to that faucet? Now, you just sit there and relax, and I'll be right back with you. Come on, Lug, get out of that chair. Oh, but just a minute. What do you mean insulting my friend? That's my buddy's chair, and I want it. I'll give it to you, and I'm good and ready. Is that so? Yes, that's so. <laughs> well, are you ready to give it to me? On second thought, yes. But don't excite yourself, Stanley. I'll carry you. Just take it. <clears throat> Are you comfortable? Stanley. Damn, got much farther to go now. Well, here we are. Is this your car? That's. Now nah, I got it. Now I'm in it. All right. There's one. Why didn't you tell me you had two legs? Well, you didn't ask me. Get in the car. Well, I've always had them. I don't know. You are better now. Hm. Go and get the guy to move that truck. guy isn't there. Well, move it yourself.
Hold it. Steady. Thank you. And you can see in your newspapers that that is the largest boar ever bagged in India. Kept me two extra months away from the little lady. Very interesting. And I'll bet there's a story behind it. You said it. She gave me more trouble than a whole bunch of elephants. It's much safer to hunt on horseback, but I was going along on foot when suddenly he charged me. When he got close enough, I took aim and I fired. The gun jammed. I tell you, it was a narrow escape. But what did you do? Of course, look at me. You wouldn't believe that I'm very light on my foot the feet. I jumped to one side. You were in the spot. But not for long. You see, if you keep cool, everything is all right. And I was cool. I had a chill in my back. I took out both of my revolvers and I let him have 12 shots. Six and six. He almost made you a widow, didn't he, Mrs. Gilbert? Oh, I never have to worry about my husband. When he takes aim, it's a bullseye. Of course, I'm not like other hunters. I don't bring him back alive. I bring him back dead. I come back alive. I suppose you got those elephant tusks in India, too? Oh, no, in Africa. You see, I was with my safari. Uh, safari, that means a bunch of native boys. Yeah. See, I had my lion gun with me. That's much smaller as an elephant gun. And when Jumbo came charging after me, I let him have the full magazine of bullets. You think that bothered him? <laughs> that made him angry. Angry, it made him mad. Then he bowled over five or six trees. He charged again. I got down on one knee. And I took aim. I took beat at his left eye, and I let him have it. I'll bet that did the trick. <laughs> There's his teeth. Say, that reminds me, I've got to go down to the gun shop. I'm having a new gun made especially for me. I, I mean, for the elephants. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye, dear. Goodbye, darling. Gentlemen, you'll excuse me. Thanks very much. Let's make an interesting story. Thank you, Mrs. Gilbert. open the door? No one. It opens automatically. How do you mean? Well, you see that plate? Well, you just drive over that, the door opens. I never saw anything like that before. Do you mind if I try it? No, go ahead. Just drive straight back now. Drive it forward! What's it say? Out of order. Where'd you get that? I found it on there. The fella put it on there when you were looking. We'll have to walk up. What floor do you live on? The 13th. Gee, that's quite a ways. That isn't far. We'll be up there in a jiffy. Will we? What's 13 flights? <laughs> Going up? Five. That's right. Won't be long now. Six. 
Hicks. How long did you say it would take us to get up there? Oh, just a jiffy. Hmm. How far's a jiffy? About three shakes of a dead lamb's tail. Hmm. Didn't think it was so far. Surprising the distance. <laughs> Uh, how many with seven makes thirteen? Six. Swell, we've only got six more jiffies. Uh, won't be long now. talking to? I'm talking to you, you big overstuffed polywog. You smile when you call me that. Ha! If we went in this respectable apartment house, I'd wipe the floor up with you. Oh, don't let that stop you. Why don't you take him outside? Outside? See, he's afraid to go. Who's afraid to go? Anytime you're ready. <laughs> well, there's no time like the present. I come on. Well, come you on. Can't do. You can't get away with that with me. Polywog, huh? He's to talk to you like that. There's going to be a fight. Yes, sir. Uh, There's going to be a fight. Sure. Hey, Ollie, what? What's the folly want? I'll tell you later. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be a fight. Think you can get away with that, boy? There's going to be a fight. Wait, for me. <laughs> I'll better help you. Never mind. Just leave him to me. All right. We'll be over in a jiffy. Yeah. Hey, there's going to be a fight. We'll show him if he thinks he can. Don't you want to apologize? It's all right with me. Apologize? Yes. Ah, for what? For calling me an overstuffed polywog. No man living can call me an overstuffed polywog and get away with it. All right, all right. You're not an overstuffed polywog. Well, that's better. You're an inflated blimp. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but all these people can't be wrong. Well, then why don't you fight and shut up? You bet your life I'll fight. The very idea. He wants to fight. Come outside. <laughs> I'm going to give you one more chance. Now, if you want to apologize, here's your opportunity. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I knew he was yellow. <laughs> <laughs> You better call an ambulance. It's going to be terrible. Yes, sir. There's going to be a fight. You better come up. <laughs> what happened? The fight is over. Huh. <laughs> What'd you do to uh, him? Ah, never mind what I did to him. 
What did you want to suggest coming down here for when he could have punched me, uh, when we could have done the same thing on the 10th floor? Well, I didn't know he was going to... Uh, Ollie! Lulu! Gee, I haven't seen you in ages. You remember Stan, don't you? How could I ever forget him? Huh, I just met him today. You know, I haven't seen him in 20 years. No, you see, everybody thought I was dead, didn't they? Mm-hmm. How did you find out you weren't? Well, I figured that... Well, I saw my picture in the paper, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> what you doing? I was just taking Stan up to meet the missus. Uh, the missus? Yeah. Are you married? I sure am. To the finest woman in the world. And how she can cook. She picks <laughs> Holly, up the big... did you get my note? What note? I just sent a note up to your apartment, and I wouldn't want anybody but you to read it. Huh. What was in it? I was just, uh, reminiscing. Oh, come on, we've got to get that note. Ollie! What? When you get it, be sure and burn it. I will, don't worry. If I get that... Come on, here, and get me this note. Hey, what'd you do that for? Ah, uh, don't follow me. Hey, Bob, Bob, come on out here. That fat guy kicked my ball down the stairs. Hey, you. Come here. Is there going to be a fight? Shh. Go on downstairs and bring that ball back and make it snap. I'm busy. Come on, get going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go downstairs and get the ball for me. Why should I go down and get Don't you imagine? I've got to step here and get the note. It's a matter of life and death with well, you. Well, go ahead, down and don't argue with me. And hurry up. Hey, where's that ball? And my friend's I thought I told you to get that ball. I know, ball. but I've got some business back. over here. Go on down there and yes, get sir. that ball and make it quick. And I'll wait till you bring it back. He thinks I'm going to run downstairs and get that ball, and he's crazy. Give it to the kid, and don't let it happen again. Hey, Pa! Pa! That guy kicked me! Why don't you put some ice in it? Come on. Didn't you tell me you had the key out of the lock? Well, you didn't ask me. I uh, didn't ask me. Gee, that's pretty underwear. Don't get personal. Mr. Hardy. Oh. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Gilbert. <laughs> this note was left in my apartment by mistake. Thank you. Who is it from? Why, it's from Lula. Um, no, it isn't. How do I know who it's from? Uh, this is my friend, Mr. Laurel, Mrs. Gilbert. How do you do? Mrs. Gilbert is my neighbor across the hall. Uh, he's going to stay with us a while. Oh, how nice. 
How's Mrs. Hardy? Oh, she's still just as sweet as ever. Uh, I was telling him how wonderfully she could cook. Oh, yes, I hear she's one of the best. <laughs> I hope you have a pleasant stay. Goodbye. 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 Come here, here. Yoo-hoo! Oh, honey! Oh, darling! Oh, baby! She's gone shopping. She'll be back in a little while. Just sit down and make yourself at home. Gee, you got a swell place here. Mm, well, it's comfy. Have you got a cigarette? I never smoke. Do you think your wife would mind if I smoke my pipe? Of course not. What's all right with me is okay with her. I know, but a lot of dames are particular. Well, she's not. That's one thing. What do you mean calling my wife a dame? going to be back in an hour. <laughs> Is that the wife? Yeah. I thought you said she was... Oh, she's only clowning. Come on, I want you to meet her. <laughs> you know, she's the greatest little kidder in the world. Oh, darling. Oh, sugar. I want you to meet my buddy. Don't sugar me. And how often have I told you not to bring your tramp friends around here? Oh, but dear, I haven't seen Stan in 20 years. I couldn't see him in a hundred years. Oh, now, dear, this is no time for levity. I've been telling him how wonderful you could cook. Oh, you have. Yeah, why don't you fix one of those nice big juicy steaks, you know, and the seven layers? Who put that bee in your bonnet? He did, didn't you? Well, if you think that I'm going to stand over a hot stove and cook for every knick-knack you bring in here, you're crazy. Excuse me. But, but, Toots, Stan is different. I'll say he's different. And don't call me toots. What's a knick-knack? Oh, a knick-knack's a thing that sits on top of a whatnot. Huh. And don't bother me. If you knew this boy better, you'd appreciate him more. I went all the way to the soldier's home to get him to come up here and have one of your nice big juicy steak. Come out of there. And put that pipe out. Now, listen, dear, let me explain about that. I think that you were done me absolutely unfair. Don't I'm waiting to get on my way. I ask you not to talk about it. Just long, listen, you get out of my way. I tell you, I'm not going to stay here the rest of my life. I've been a lover, loyal husband to you and you're everything I've possibly had. Now, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of my way. 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 I
Thanks for the lovely time, and I'll be seeing you later. And... Where are you going? Well, I'm going over to the soldier's home. What for? Well, I want to get something to eat. You'll have something to eat if I have to cook it myself. Well, that's different. Now you go in and light the oven, and I'll set the table. We'll show her. I'll say we'll show her. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that to me! You got a match? What do you want with it? I want to light the oven. Ah, go and sit down. You get on my nerves. I'll light it. Anytime I want something done right, I always have to do it myself. Well, you see, we had a slight accident. Uh, I was preparing to cook dinner for my friend, Mr. Laurel. And... Oh, where's Mrs. Hardy? Uh, well, luckily, she went out before this happened. What would she think if she saw the place like this? Oh, I shudder to think of it. Well, let me help you clean it up before she comes back. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, Mrs. Gilbert. Where have you been? I thought there was an earthquake. Well, go ahead and turn that gas off and get me a drink of punch. I'm a nervous wreck. And get one for Mrs. Gilbert. Uh, never mind. I'll do it myself. That's right. Whenever you want anything done right, always do it yourself. <laughs> Pardon us, Mrs. Gilbert. Certainly. We'll have this place cleaned up in just a jiffy. Turn that gas off. Get me some glasses. Oh! Oh! Gee, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Gilbert. Oh. oh, well, that's quite all right. Accidents will happen. <laughs> I'll get you something to dry your dress. No, don't bother, Mr. Hardy. I I'll just run over to the apartment. It won't take me a minute to change. I'll be right back. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. What happened? What happened? Something wrong, Mrs. Gilbert? Oh, I left my key in the apartment and it's locked. What'll I do? Maybe Mrs. Hardy left something you could slip on. I'll look and see. Oh, that's fine. There you are, Mrs. Gilbert. Uh, this is all I could find. Now, you go in there and take off that wet dress before you catch cold. And, and while you're changing, I'll phone downstairs and have them send you up a key. Thank you, Mr. Hart. You're welcome, and thank you. <laughs> Hello? 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 
Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Mr. Hardy. How do you do? How are you? Fine, thank you. That's good. <laughs> nice weather we're having. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. uh, say, Mrs. Gilbert is locked out of her apartment, and will you please send up a key? What's the number? Uh, just a minute. Hold on. Right there. 1314. Why should I send up a key? I've got nothing to do with it. If she came in here and... <laughs> oh, Mrs. Gilbert, the phone is out of order, and I'll have to go downstairs and get your key. Oh, would you do that, Mr. Hardy? Oh, yes, I'll take the elevator. I'll be back in just a jiffy. <laughs> Don't take too long. My wife, Mrs. Hardy, is coming. Oh, that's all right. I can explain. Not in my pajamas, you can't explain. You don't know my wife. What are we going to do? We've got to hide. That's Quick, a good idea. Hurry up and get... no, I'll find a place myself. You come with me. There's no place in here to hide. We've got to find a place. My wife will kill me. Now sit like a chair. What? Sit like a chair, like that. And don't, don't make a noise. Just hold still. Come on, quick, we can hide in here. What happened here? I don't know. We started to cook a steak. Never mind that. Where is that big fat billikin of mine? He's hiding. Where? In there. Oh, he is, is he? Well, he won't be hiding long. Get there and see my grandfather. The grandfather, ha <laughs> ha, laughed. He said, hello, sugar. Hey. Don't sugar me. What's been going on in here and how come my car's all smashed? Well, dear, I'll tell you something. Sit down. <laughs> Not only is my car all smashed, but I come back after five minutes and find the place entirely wrecked. Well, if you let me... What have you been doing? Sit down. <laughs> Have you been playing soldier with this buddy of yours here? I work and work and save morning, noon, and night, trying to keep things nice for you. And what happens, I don't come back and find things wrecked. Sit down, I tell you. For the love of Mike, if you think that I'm going home to mother, you're crazy. I'm going to stay right here and nice. And the first minute I turn, you bring a new Oh, I wouldn't argue. What do you mean? After all, it's all to argue. That's all he is. Oh, just because I came up here, I had nothing to do with it. Silly to go and arguing like that. What are you arguing about? I haven't said anything. You want me to go? I'll stay as long as you want. The silliest thing that I ever heard. And I gave you a dollar and twenty-five cents. The silliest thing that I ever heard. I wish you'd stop this argument. It's the silliest thing I ever heard. Hey, say, where's the... Get up from there! Oh, you my beautiful you, 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 stone! Well, Why don't you figure that oh, you can get the thing? You don't give anybody a chance to talk about the whole thing. I was standing out there and I thought, I don't know, children. I don't know. 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 I can do just as I like, because she told me that I could sit. Big dumbbell. Oh, my beautiful In the trunk. Oh. Come here. Get, get in here, quick. Hurry up. Now, let me tell you something once well, Let me tell all. you something. Sit down. Yes. Now, you listen to me. I want to... Shush. I've got enough of this. Oh, how dare you? Tut, 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 tut. I'm going to leave for a change, and I'm not going home to mother. Pardon us. Come, Stan. Ha, 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 ha. Just 
a minute. Where do you think you're going? I've packed my clothes and I'm leaving for Honolulu. Oh, you are? Who put that bee in your bonnet? Stan did. He said that I should get out of here, and besides, a trip will do me good. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. So, not content with wrecking my home, you want to take my husband away from me, do you? Oh, I'll fix you. <laughs> you're going to be a fight. Wait a minute, you're not going to get out Let of here. Let me tell you something. You're I'm going to tell me anything. You've been telling me for you. Oh, no, you're not. That's fine. You're not going to tell me anything. Oh, no, you don't. That's fine. Oh, no, you don't. That's fine. You've been asked the matter of what's happening. I'll tell you what's the matter and what's happening. That little worm, that grub, is trying to break up my happy home. But I'll fix him. I'll get the police and have him taken back to the old soldier's home, where he belongs. That's what I'm going to do. Mm, so you're a homebreaker, huh? You look like the kind of a guy that would break up a happy home. Do you know what I would do to anybody that would come between me and my wife? I get my trusty fouling pills and I, I, I blow them to, to nothing. Well, I had nothing to do with it. You see, he brought me here from the old soldier's home. He was going to give me a nice thick steak. Never mind that. What happened? Well, you see, he's got a girl in the trunk and he didn't want his wife to know. So he asked me to... What did you tell him that for? Well, he asked me, <laughs> didn't you? When the wife's away, the rest will play. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what do you want to bring him into your own home for? That's ridiculous. Why don't you come with me sometime? I know that there's a whole bunch of plans. <laughs> Say, listen, why do you think I go to polio all the time? <laughs> you gotta come with me sometimes. <laughs> you too. How do you do? I was gonna... My wife! Is it polio? You got it! Die! Polio! You... I can't even find them too much. 